Hello everybody, it's Jonathan Senor Smoke at Curdo's, The Ring of Fire in Westchester, and I want to thank you, uh, first of all, for uh, purchasing your DCS grill from us this year. Um, the reason I'm putting this video together is that a few folks um, who purchased have asked me to put together kind of a list of best practices in using the grill, and I think this would be especially helpful for those of you who got the DCS and you had moved from, say, um, a Weber or Napoleon, something that's going to be, um, you know, weaker in terms of output and things of that nature. So, because the DCS is a hot rod, it's a muscle car, there's no two ways about it. So let me get to this, because remember, I do own a DCS myself, I gotta put a lot of cooking time on it. So the first thing you wanna do, and I understand that most of you probably have been cooking on it already, but for those who've had a recent delivery, it's always important to do that, for number one, is to do the burn-in. The burn-in is simply, once everything, the tape is off, you're unpacked, you're connected to gas, you wanna let the burners rip for about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, number two is to always season with oil. Now we don't use olive oil. What I like to do is use grapeseed oil. Grapeseed oil has a very high threshold in terms of handling heat. So I will coat the grates front and back with grapeseed oil. Definitely when I first get the grill and then I try to do it almost every time I cook. And what, the, what that's gonna do is it's actually, since stainless steel is porous, it's gonna fill in some of those little uh, ports on the stainless steel that may be microscopic, can't see it with your own eye. And what it will also do is it actually seasons the grates. So it, essentially what's gonna happen is it's gonna become almost like a non-stick surface, and that's gonna be especially helpful for those of you who cook chicken a lot or are going to do things, um, you know, fish, flaky fish. This may be the most important thing, and again, especially for the folks who've gone from a lower power grill to the DCS, is you need to ease into it, okay? The folks out there who have been cooking on one since the summer could probably appreciate the heat, the power that the grill gives off. If you cook on sear, you cook on high, you are going to turn things into hockey pucks and incinerated pieces of protein. You don't want that. I find myself really hanging around medium most of the time. Uh, if I got to catch a quick sear on a steak or a piece of tuna, yeah, I'll go transform one side of the grill to a searing station. But I really think that you're going to be doing most of your cooking at medium at best. So again, ease your way in. Everybody's gonna, you know, you have your own recipes, your own dishes that you like to make. You'll find your own way, but medium is probably going to be the happy medium for many of you out there. In terms of cleaning, and this comes up a lot too, and this is gonna lead to actually prolonging the life of the grill. You need to be very careful, okay? Because as you know, your grill, whether you have a seven series or a nine series, has these rods, the ceramic rods in them, which if something drops on them, they crack. Now, can you get replacements? Yes, but that is the one disadvantage of this grill. I wish that the, uh, that the rods had more protection on them. So number one, be very careful when taking those trays out because they crack, but the self-cleaning aspect of it is very simple. All you have to do is literally take your finger and roll the rod to the part that is actually filthy, all right, and then have that roll towards the bottom and then once again let the burners rip and do their job. Will it ever be absolutely showroom clean? No, that's not gonna, that won't be the case 10 minutes after you start cooking on it. But it is important to clean these rods because if the rods hatch start to develop guck and other byproducts of cooking, the grease, the oil, all starting to build up on there, that is going to be a fodder for flare-ups. And flare-ups, I don't care what the grease management system is on this, if, you, if those rods, and this is for any of these high-end grills, once the ceramics start to get gucked up, you're gonna have massive flare-ups, and that's gonna cause a whole litany of problems. The last thing, which is also related to cleaning up, is the tray, the drip tray over here. Now, many of you bought the DCS because of this incredible grease management system, where the grease, because of the sloped trough, the sloped grates, they'll go down to the trough, and then you have the easy clean-up right here to the drip tray, bang, we're done. 
However, I have a lot of folks who don't clean the drip tray. If you don't clean the drip tray, it's going to start to develop issues down there as well, which, because of its proximity to the firebox, is also going to cause flare-ups and things of that nature. So I'm not telling you, you don't need to clean every single time you cook on the thing, but try to be somewhat fastidious in terms of cleaning the ceramic rods. Just rotate them and let it rip. Rotate and rip is what I call it. And try to clean the drip tray out. It's very easy. Just pick it up, dump it out. You don't want things developing down there and that's also if you do leave it that's also going to be fodder for attracting vermin and other nasty things you don't want going in your grill particularly in the winter um, I thank you again for your business um, if you have any friends who are interested whether it's DCS other grills appliances please send them along to us we'll take care of them and I wish you I hope that everybody you purchase this year that you are going to be cooking on your DCS this fall and winter because quite honestly to me that is the best time to be outside grilling because I can't stand mosquitoes and I can't stand the humidity. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Thank you again. Any questions, get me at jonathan at curdos.com. Thanks.